So here we've got chapter nine, uh, decision making process, and this chapter talks about organizational decision making process of identifying and solving problems. Um, do you guys remember? Uh, if you are an individual, you have to uh, make a decision, right? Remember when we say if you are between eighteen and twenty-four, you make all of your life decisions, right? You decide your school, your major, your friends, your job, your colleagues, your friends, your partners, your uh, husband or wife, significant other. Now, companies, they also have stage in their life where they make all of their decisions, you see. But for organizations, they continuously make decisions and they're very important decisions in their life. Maybe a, a company, you know, life is longer than a human being and you can have different people too. So if we look at decisions for a human being, it's a little bit different than decisions for an organization. Now, if you're an individual, you make a decision. How do you make your decisions? You look at your own self, right? Versus the world. You make a decision. Some people, they make the decisions from their minds. And other people make their decisions from... Their heart. And when you make a decision, some people, they will make a decision based on the information they see as individuals. Now, if you are a company, do you make the same idea? Is there similarities or differences or no? Because at the end, if you have a big boss, that's a human being. Some managers, they think from their heart. Some managers, they think from their mind. Right? Right? But if you're an organization, there are also some other dynamics. So we will talk about these. Some companies have program decisions. You know what's a program decision? For example, if you, come, if you are absent 25% of the time, you're automatically withdrawn. That's a decision by the whole organization. You see, some organizations, if you want to join our company, you have to sign this contract. Decision program. This is the contract. You're going to join. You take the decision. So there are some, in the company, some decisions are already programmed. Do you say programmed? Yes. That's good. There are some non-programmed decisions, like novel, poorly defined. What do we mean by a non-programmed decision? It's a decision that is not already preset. There is no rules. You know, for this situation, you know, we need to take a decision, right? Sometimes it's emergency. Sometimes it's very critical. Let's say, for example, there is a war. You know, that's not programmed. So maybe we need to take a decision. Maybe it's an emergency. Maybe our competition are dropping their prices. Now, what do we do if our competition drive the prices? Maybe we do one, two, three. Maybe we don't. Do you see? So the idea of today's business environment, there are lots of new strategies. You need to make decisions. Maybe you want to do re-engineering. You know what's re-engineering? Like you take the company and you re-engineer it. Accounting, you put them here. Sales, you put them there. You close a branch, you open a new branch. Do you see? Uh, maybe restructure. It's a similar. The, the difference between re-engineering and restructure is that restructure has to do with the structure. Do you know the structure? Like the organization chart. So you add a department, remove a department. Re-engineering, it can be between the people, can be what products you offer, what services you do, uh, what processes that work or doesn't work. Maybe you want to do a merger. Do you know what's a merger? You go and you merge with another competitor. Maybe you go and you buy another competitor. You know, these are decisions you need to make. Do you guys know the idea of downsizing? Yes. You know, if you want to fire people. Do you like this downsizing, Ali? And then there's also some new product market development, right? You want to go to a new product, new development. So now, if you're an individual decision maker, we talked about rational approach and boundary rationality perspective. Do you guys understand these two? Rational approach is an ideal method for how managers should make decisions. That's when you think from your brain. Rational, do you know the word rational? The word rational means wise. So... If you're an individual, you can think wise. You know what we mean by wise? Wise, it means someone, you make a decision based on analysis. You see, you take the facts, you read the information, and you make a decision. You know, you, you, you get some computer system maybe to help you. Maybe you look at the reports. 
Some people make a decision based on facts. Let's say these two people fight. I want to make a rational decision. I bring this guy, I bring this guy. What happened, what happened? Tell me the facts, tell me the facts. I have all of the facts in front of me. I take a decision. So it's ideal methods for how managers should make decisions. That's how managers should do. On the other hand, we've got the idea of a bounded rationality, the idea of a bounded rationality perspective. What does this mean? Decisions are made under severe time and resource constraints. <coughs> Why some managers don't do right decisions? The biggest obstacle is always time, resources. You don't have time. Bring this guy, bring this guy. What is the story? What is the story? You listen, you listen. You take the information. Maybe you have questions, you have questions. And then you need to read everything and then think about it, make a decision, right? That's expensive, you need time. Sometimes you need to have resources, you need money, right? Maybe you need money to, you know, to spend in order to get the facts. Do you think information can come to you easily? Sometimes not cheap. You need to spend the money in order to get. Maybe you need to uh, spend some effort. Maybe you need to go to the site of location to see. Maybe you find some evidence. You want to take them to the, you know, to the hospital to check the DNA of this. So sometimes it can be expensive. So that makes decision making more difficult. So what do you do? Now, in the rational approach, you go through those steps. Do you guys see those steps here? So, number one, we've got here you monitor the decision environment. Define a problem. Do you guys remember when they say, if you solve, if you understand the problem, that is half the answer? How many people agree that understanding the problem, defining it well, is really half the answer? Okay. That's the idea, is that number one, you need to understand what is the real problem. Okay, number two, uh, you know, after you monitor the decision environment and you define the problem, you go to the st step where it says you specify decision objectives. So what do I need to, to do? You diagnose the problem. You develop alternative solution. So remember, anyone have had the question, what are my options? Anyone have asked themselves, what are my options? If you want to be a better decision maker, you always have to ask yourself, what are my options? Because if you don't understand your options, you don't know what other things you can do. Do you see? Let's say, for example, um, anyone have had a problem before? Give us an example of a problem. You fail your class, right? So, you know, you go to the exam. Let's say we have an exam this Thursday. You take the exam, you fail. Now, it's important to ask yourself, what are my options? You see, so maybe my option is, okay, I can drop, maybe I can run, maybe I can study, maybe I can go and see if there's a makeup, maybe I can go uh, see if there's, you see, what are my options? So you need to see what are the available options, because sometimes maybe there's an option, you didn't think about it, but if you think about it, that would be a great option. You see? So always ask yourself, what are my options? Develop alternative solution, and then you evaluate alternatives. And then you evaluate. First option, second option, third option, which one is the best? That one is the best. And then you want to implement the chosen alternative. Okay. Are you guys okay with this? See, this is very critical because you guys <coughs> remember when you play games, you need to understand the rule of the game in order to understand your options. Right? And then once you understand your options, then you can see which one option will get you. Now, on the other hand, if you talk about the bounded uh, rationality perspective, we're saying that there is a limit to how rational managers can be time, resources, constraints, non program decisions. So, here, bounded rationality is problems with two things time, resources. resources. So, we've got to do constraints and trade-off. Can constraints uh, impinge the decision maker? Do you guys understand the idea of trade-off? How many people remember trade-off? From economics, maybe. Do you remember trade-offs? No? Do 
you guys remember constraints from your quantitative class what is this you guys don't remember anything after the so in order to, so in, in in the case of you have uh, minimum time or uh, uh, you know uh, less time less resources you want to make a decision uh, and you don't have uh, enough time and uh, resources then you will have to do a trade-off so maybe you are willing to take a, a weak decision because you don't have time you see this way you have less time and you have this decision or maybe you need to spend the money in order to have a very uh, low time or maybe you know you just accept spend time spend money and make a good decision so that's uh, that's you know needs to be in your mind so that you are aware of that and here comes the role of intuition you guys know what's intuition the experience and judgment rather than logic how many people they you guys remember when we talked about your gut feeling do you guys remember when we said that some people they believe in the idea that my heart always tell me the truth yeah. remember an LB Delili we talked about this so the idea here is where your heart learn from experience and after a while remember if you see someone who has been working for 60 years in the company they know all the decisions they don't do a lot of thinking you know two employees come to them they have a fight they look at the first they look at the second you're right you're wrong go you see and if you check it you know they were correct how did they get this wisdom from the experience and then it's become more of a experience and judgment more than logic do you see so good managers they have good intuition bad managers they don't have good intuition so let's see here we've got this boundary rationale we've got limited time information We've got complex, multi-dimensional issues. We have to trade it off, okay? We've got organizational constraints also, level of agreement, shared perspective, <coughs> culture, culture uh, structure, ethical values. Now, these are more of an organizational constraints. Does that make the decision-making easier or more difficult? See, inside the company, it is more difficult to make a decision. If you are alone, you may can make your own decision. You say, my decision, I quit. But if you are an organization, can you quit? More difficult. You can't quit if you are an organization. If you want to make a decision as an organization, do you make a decision by yourself alone or you have to take care of everyone else? You have to take care of everyone else. Do you have to take care about uh, the culture of the company? You have to follow the culture of the company. Do you have to check the structure? You have to check the structure. Do you see? So making organ decisions in organizations are more difficult. Require more time. Do you see? Talk to Osama and he will tell you how easy to make decisions in the student center. You need to check students, administration, president, structure, values. There are lots of things. So now makes decisions more difficult, right? So here we've got personal constraints. And also we have people, they have their own prestige, right? If you're a manager, you have your own prestige you want to respect, you see? And other people have their own prestige. Other people have their own ego. You guys know ego? Yeah. The personal decision style. Some people, they take decisions in this style. Some people make decisions in the morning. Some people make decisions at the evening. You see? Uh, you need to satisfy emotional needs. Some people, they want to have their emotional ego respected, right? Do you guys remember if, uh, you know, what was it, Zaid, he wants to do a PlayStation game here in the campus, and he wants to get all the people to play? Do you see, now is he going to have to satisfy the emotional needs, cope with the pressure, maintaining self-concepts? How many people will not play PlayStation? Yeah, that's for kids. See, how many people say, no, it's, you know, this is, you know, what men do. <laughs> See, we've got those. Now, women also wants to. 
So we've got this idea, once you're in an organization, you've got more dynamics. Maybe Zaid can play at home and no one will talk to him and he doesn't need to worry about anyone else. But now in an organization, there's a big uh, number of people contributing into the decision, what, what not, how, how not. So now he needs to make it in a time that's suitable for men and, and for male and females and he's going to have to choose a game that is, you know, uh, you know appreciated by all the participants or potential participants and you see so that makes it a little bit more challenging and he is now to trade off did you decide what game you will do fifa or what what's the best uh so uh the idea here is that you know after all of these constraints and personal constraints uh, you have to trade it off and you need to reach a decision and you search for the high quality decision alternative so this becomes a challenge. So the idea here is you make a decision alone difficult and a group more difficult. Now, management science approach. So, so here we've got several, we'll talk about different approaches. Some people says we need to follow the management science approach. What does this approach say? The management science approach says that you need to use statistics to identify relevant variables. You need to remove any human elements. Don't worry about emotions. Just remove all emotions, ego, personality out. Very scientific, okay? One plus one equals two. I don't care. <coughs> they say this is very successful for military. If you're a military, you want to remove anything that is emotional out. Just keep it one plus one equals two. One gun hits someone, someone dies. Do you see, this is how it works. They say uh, good tools for decisions where variables can be identified and measured. So you need to have good decision tools. Do you see? So those decision tools, you know what's a decision tool? Like indicators, like data, like variables. Do you remember your quantitative class? That is all decision science. For those who have not taken it, you will take it. That's basically they teach you how to do science, uh, how to do decisions using science. One plus one equals two. And then that's how you make decisions. So do I open a new branch or not? You go to the database and the database data analysis, open. No open. No emotions, no constraints, no ego, no structure, no organizational ethics, no. Some people say, no, don't close the branch. Employees, they will not find jobs to work. Don't close the branch. We need to pay. We already paid the rent. It's a decision science. We do the equations, the mathematics. It tells us the decision. A drawback of management science is management. How many people think management science is great? Now, management science is great, but there's a big problem with it. What is it? It is completely quantitative data. And this quantitative data is not always rich. And sometimes it lack tacit knowledge. Sometimes there is information in our mind that is not in the numbers. Do you understand? For example, let's say if you see your grades. Now, if you do a purely decision based on the grades or the transcript, and you completely ignore other ideas, plans, what you see will happen, don't make a wrong decision. Some people say no, the numbers are not always correct, why? Because those numbers in statistics and information sometimes are not accurate. You see, you need to use what's in the people knowledge that is not in the numbers. Sometimes the numbers are missing, do you see? So how can we make that problem solved? We started to look into other models. This is another model how to make a decision. If you are a manager of a company and you want to make a decision, then you need to understand that there is information is limited and managers have limited, have many constraints. So if you're a manager, you don't have all the tools, you don't have all of the answers. So there is some sort of level of uncertainty. And here, if you have a conflict, managers have diverse goals, opinions and values and experiences. So that's another conflict. What do you guys think is everyone in the class have the same objectives of this class? Some students are here for learning. Other people are here because 
They want to pass. Some want to get the attendance signature today. Some are here today because, you know, they have another class after this class. Some people are here because they had a class before this class. Some people are here because their friends are here. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Muhammad, are, are you here because your friends are here? No. no? I'm here to make something great. To make something great? For, for your friends? Okay. It's the same idea. You're here for your friends, or your friends are here for you. <coughs> so, after that, we've got this coalition formation. You have a whole joint discussion, and you interpret goals and problems. You share your opinions. You establish problem priorities. And you obtain social support for problems and solutions. You search where you conduct a simple local search. You use established procedures if uh, appropriate, and you create solutions if needed. And then you satisfy decision behavior. You adopt the first alternative that is acceptable to the coalition. The Karanji model says what you need to do when you make a decision, you get everyone else. I agree with you on what to do. And that's how you make a right decision. Are you guys okay with this? So don't go to the database or the statistics or no. Go to the other people in your side or your organization. And with them, you make a decision. You see? So before you do your course project, check with the other friends. What do you think of this idea? If they all agree, then you do it. If they all disagree, then you don't do it. Are you guys okay? Even if they agree, you will lose if you follow them. Just yeah, that's my, that's why it says here you need to uh, you conduct a simple local search and you establish procedures if appropriate. You create a resolution if needed, and then you adapt the first alternative that is acceptable. Okay, so whatever you think is acceptable to the group, you do that. Are you guys okay with this? What what model approach is this? The Karaji. There's another idea model that says incremental decisions. Incremental decisions focus on a structural sequence of activities from discovery to solution. The idea here is you do it a step by step, okay? So at large decisions are a collection of small choices. So if you're a company you wanna make a decision, don't make a big decision once. Make small decisions, one at a time. Small decision after another small decision until you reach. So it says your large decision, it says your decisions, interprets our barriers, identifying phase, development, selection, and dynamic factors. So that's what will interpret, uh, so that's what will make it a little bit more uh, difficult to do. But the other model here, it says what? Small, step by step. Are you guys okay with this? So the first one we looked at was decision science, statistics. Number two, coalition, you go to the group. Number three, take a small decision once <coughs> at a time. Next, we've got this problem identification and problem solutions. Combine the incremental process with the Karaji model. So this is one way where you can have a problem identification. Problem identification is uncertain, Karaji model applies. Political, social is needed. Building coalition needed, okay? Now, for a problem solution, it says here it's better to use the incremental. When a problem solution is uncertain, in incremental decision applies. So here it says incremental trial and error processes is needed. And you solve big problems in little steps. You recycle and then you try again when blocked. Are you guys okay with this problem identification, problem solution? No, sir. The idea is you, when you use the Karaji, if you want to identify the problem or the solution? The problem. The problem. When you use the incremental, find a solution, okay? Do you guys remember when you fail from the exam? Yes. Okay. Some people fail from the exam, decide to go use Karaji. They go, they talk to each other. Make a group. I failed, you failed, you didn't fail, but you got low grade. So let's talk together, you see? So they make this small group, they talk together, and then they identify, what is the best solution that's acceptable to all of us, okay? And then after that, they go to solve the problem. Now, when they solve the problem, they go and use the step-by-step -step methods, okay? So what do we do? We study harder now. Uh, maybe we talk to the instructor.
maybe we go and we uh, you know petition the exam maybe we go you see start small steps and you do it one by one Good. okay well, that's maybe one of the solutions now next we've got this garbage uh, can uh, model do you guys know what's a garbage can model the garbage can model is a pattern or flow of uh, multiple decisions so here you fail the exam, what do you do? You can try the garbage can. Can you please explain? Do you know what's a garbage? Yes. No garbage? Yes. Can? Yes. Some people, when they fail the exam, they go to the garbage. And they start to collect from the garbage decisions. Do you see? They try this, work, no. Try this, work, no. Try this, no work. When do you use this? If you absolutely have no idea what to do to pass, like you failed 10 times. Now you need to do something completely different. So go to the garbage, out the try out of the box. Yes. Excellent, uh, Mohammed. Pattern of flow of multiple decisions. You want to think of the whole organization. You want to explain decision making in a high uncertainty organized anarchy. Problematic references, unclear, poorly understood technology, turnover. The streams of events instead of defined problems and solutions. So in a garbage can model, you want to try, okay? See what works, what doesn't work. Now, if you try the garbage can, this is what can happen to you. There are four things that can happen to you if you use the garbage can. Number one, solutions may propose even when problems do not exist. If you try the garbage can, maybe you try the garbage can, it says, get married. Maybe you get married, next time you take the class, you pass. Maybe, do you see? So maybe you solve a problem that didn't even exist. Do you see, or you didn't pay attention, it existed. Choices are made without solving problems. So maybe you go, you get the garbage can, it says, you know, um, go to, uh, I don't know. Uh, and then here you've got uh, some choices uh, that you found that uh, you didn't solve the problem that you had while you were failing the exam, but you found the solution. You see, go uh, to, uh, you know. Showing the other blueprints. <laughs> It's not solving the problem. It's not solving the problem. But it's not a solution. Is it the solution? To replace the stress and... Okay. Yeah, maybe. But remember, but remember, this is a garbage can. It means that you never thought of it. You see? Basically, uh, basically what other <laughs> ideas... Yeah, that's maybe true. Yeah, try another university. You see? Go there. Maybe you find the solution there. Problems may persist without being solved. So maybe, <coughs> maybe you take this garbage can, you take it, um, you know, uh, and then you find some uh, uh, solution, and uh, you may still have the same problems that you used to. And a few problems may be solved. Are you guys okay with this idea of a uh, garbage can? Yeah. Which one do you like best from the garbage can? Uh, For me, the uh, first one. The first one? Yes. Which one? You study hard? Okay. Next, we've got this illustration of independent streams of events in the garbage can model. The garbage can model says here you've got a problem and you have a solution. Now, you need to find some sort of a management for this problem and you find solution. So in this graph, we've got P. What does P mean? Mean problem. S means solution. Uh, CO, it means choices, opportunities, like my options or what are alternatives. And then P-A-R-S, uh, that means participants. So here, problems leads to solutions. Maybe here we've got some uh, uh, choices that uh, affect participants. And then we've got participants, you know, other people in your life, inside your organization, other participants from here. And all of this can generate choices, okay? Then choices inside department A, you've got problems and uh, solutions, uh, Choices and participants, solutions, problems, uh, solutions, participants, problems. So the idea here is that, you know, uh, you've got problems and you've got solutions and you try. Try a problem, try a solution, try choices, try other participants in order to find a solution. Did we finish? Time finished? All right. Uh, maybe uh, we uh, stop over here.